guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are talking winter time fishing, specifically where do these fish go? In so many fisheries, they just vanish. Winter time can be tough. Today we're gonna help you break that down. We're gonna talk about a handful of the places that those fish are going to go, where you can go find them. And I'm gonna give you some quick tips on how to actually target and catch those fish as well. It's December here in California. Today we're actually between storms. We've got a pretty nice day. Highs in the upper 50s, it's comfortable out. Uh, very blessed with those conditions to come out here and talk to you guys about winter fishing. I know a lot of you guys are totally frozen up already. Hang in there. Now winter time, there's basically three different patterns that we can run unless weather gets involved. And then there's a fourth the three places that these fish are going to go. And it can be all three on a fishery. If your fishery is very diverse, like Clear Lake here where we live, you can have all three happening at the same time. If your fishery is a little bit smaller or not as diverse, you're gonna see one or two of the three. But these three places are where bass go everywhere across the entire country. This is where they spend the winter. First one, is going to be deep rock. If you've got a fishery that has hard rock in it, the fish are making a beeline straight there. They're going to sit on that rock. That's where they're going to spend the entire winter. They're gonna get right down, sit on the bottom, get comfortable, and they're typically going to be there in large schools. Rare that you're going to find one over here or one over there. More often than not, if, you're, if your fishery only has a little bit of rock, they're all there. But if your fishery has a little bit of rock here, a little bit of rock there, a little bit of rock down there, you're gonna start checking those spots and you're gonna find no fish, no fish, no fish. And then you're gonna find the one that has tons of fish. They group up so tight when they sit on that rock. So if you go to one or two spots, don't be discouraged. Keep searching, because when you find them, it's the mother load. Like I said, they're gonna be bunched up. You can typically fish them a little more aggressively. You know, you might still be finesse fishing for them, uh, but you can get a lot of fish going. And this is the time of year that you can start throwing that big, big bait also. Don't be afraid to do it. We haven't really been talking about that a whole lot this fall into winter, but this is prime time. Once your fishery gets tough, if you get out there and you're only getting two or three or four bites for a full day of fishing or no bites for a full day of fishing, throw the big bait. I mean, if you can throw a Ned rig and you only catch two fish and they're both one pounders, there's not a lot of risk there to step up and throw a giant bait and see if you can't get a giant bite. Because typically if you just creep bottom, super slow on that hard rock, you're talking about one or two or three bites a day. It's the exact same thing. You can finesse all day for small ones, get the occasional good bite, or big bait all day and hope for just that one big, big bite or even a few of those big, big bites. So keep that in mind. This is the time of year to go for it. So that's rock. And again, we're talking it, it depends on the fishery. Here on Clear Lake, the upper end of the lake is this big shallow bowl. So that rock, it might only be in five to nine feet of water. It's not very deep. The other end of the lake, we have deeper water. So you could be talking 20, 30, 40 feet deep. And it's gonna be like that on your fishery, depending on how steep your fishery is. If it's a big bowl, they're probably not very deep. But if it's got deep, sharp edges, those fish could be in 30, 40, 50, 60, 90 feet of water take your time you're going to find them so number one is the rock number two is what we call the hollows now what is a hollow a hollow is going to describe a couple of different places depending on what your fishery is like if you've got pronounced coves you know long fingers that go back maybe running water in the back of a creek arm that the very center of that cove the, the do nothing gut of the cove. We're gonna call that the hollow. Now, if you're on a fishery like this, or it's a big wide expanse, or you're a pond fisherman, and it's just featureless, it's just a big bowl, it's just mud. 
the center, the lowest point, the farthest from the shorelines, that's the hollow. Depends on what kind of fishery you're on. Whether we're talking about the center, the gut of the coves, or we're talking about the center of the bays, or the center of the pond. But the very center of that hollow is location number two. Typically, hollows are just mud bottom. Not always, they might have chunk rock, they might have had a creek that used to run through them, and it's exposed a lot of cover, but typically they're pretty barren. The fish are gonna go right down and just put their bellies in the mud, and they're gonna lay flat on the bottom. Hollows are probably the most fun place to find fish, because once you've located them, it's a pattern. Now, if you're on a fishery that's just you know a small pond and there's only one hollow, you don't have a pattern, but if you're on a large fishery and you discover that those fish are right out in the gut of the coves and they're at 27 feet, you come down the center of that cove and as soon as you run over 27 feet, there's a couple of arches on your electronics and you fire down there and you catch one. Well, guess what? Those fish are gonna be at roughly 27 feet in every cove. It's a pattern and it's very consistent. So it's the most fun, I think, because once you've found them, you've really found them. And then you can run a pattern until you find the better fish. Hollows are also fun because there's so many ways to catch, to catch those fish. You can finesse them, you can throw the jig, throw a finesse worm, a Ned rig. But this is also the opportunity where the blade bait, the LV500, the underspin, the A-rig, all those fun patterns come into play and you can really key in on those fish. Now, the third place that these fish are going to show up is going to be on hard cover. And again, depending on your fishery, that can vary a little bit. We could be talking about hard cover as dock pilings. We could be talking about hard cover as lay down trees in the water. We could be talking about it as a garbage can that rolled into the lake in the middle of a windy day. Uh, but the fish are gonna get right up against that cover. And again, depth varies. On a lot of our bodies of water, what we see is that the fish will go to the ends of the docks and the biggest fish sit just off the end of the dock, three to 10 feet off the end of the last piling. They sit out there in the open, but they're able to move in and feed if they want to, but that seems to be where they're comfortable. So if the dock ends in say 15 feet of water, you're expecting those fish somewhere in 17 to 20 feet of water right in front of the dock. Now in other fisheries where you don't have the depth, those fish are gonna get right up tight to the lay down trees, logs in the water, pilings, rocks. They're gonna get right up against that cover. Now here's the key. The very best pieces of cover, whether we're talking about old dilapidated dock pilings that are broken off, or we're talking about lay down wood or stick ups, it doesn't matter. The best pieces of cover all winter long are the pieces that protrude from the surface of the water. So if you're going along and you can see dock pilings in the water and they're all cut off just below the water line, but you can see them. And then there's one that sticks up out of the water. That's the one. That's the one that will have the best fish. The reason why is that these fish want to get warm and the pieces that actually stick up out of the water get warm first and transfer that heat down. It's minute, but the fish can tell the difference and they wanna sit up against that cover that's getting warm. They'll stick up against a single little stick that sticks up out of the water instead of an entire bush that's submerged. They want that heat. Remember, these fish are cold and they've been cold for a long time at this point. They're looking to get warm. Now that shallow cover, a lot of different ways to fish it. My two favorite are going to be the jig, and the jerk bait. The suspending jerk bait is so much fun around that cover. Fish it extra slow, you know, twitch, twitch, and then pause. And just wait and wait and wait. You're giving it five to 10 seconds of just sitting there suspended and then twitch, and then you wait. What'll happen is every time that thing darts, those fish are aware of it because they're in that shallow cover. It darts and then it just sits there. And if you're going fast, they, they're not gonna come out and chase after it. But if it twitch, 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 and then just sits over their head, 
and they've got time to just come up and look at it and they're not working hard just having a look and then another twitch they're on it the jerkbait bite this time of year can be ferocious and it's fun because you're cold the water's cold you're fishing slow and then they just smash on it so much fun now the one hiccup this time of year is weather weather can be a huge huge factor so here's the deal if you have rising or dropping water that's a major factor and it is going to change everything if you have dropping water fast dropping water mind you not slow if there's just a minute change in water depth don't worry about it but if that water is crashing if they're pulling water out of a lake in preparation for spring typically the fish will lift off the bottom and away they pick up and away and they suspend those fish are difficult to catch you can still do it that slow jerk bait the underspin the swim bait probably your best bets but that is a difficult condition conversely if that water is rising if you've got storms coming in and you've got a serious rise in water that chocolate milk water is flowing those fish love it I don't care what your water temperature is they are going to rush the bank I don't care if that water is 42 degrees or 52 degrees those fish are gonna suck right up to the cover if you have running water coming in actual creeks dumping water into the lake the fish will go right up in the current like a trout or a salmon they'll sit right there and eat everything that's coming down the current if you don't have creeks coming in if it's just running in off the slope around the edges of the lake then the fish will just draw up shallow everywhere that they can get and they'll sit right along the shore because as that water rises there's all sorts of new cover coming into the water all sorts of new food coming into the water and they'll be up there pushing that edge you can power fish for them probably my favorite way is a spinnerbait did i even bring one yeah white on white spinnerbait is my favorite way to catch them during that rising muddy water but don't be afraid to adapt earlier this year tim and i ran into a similar condition where we had freezing cold water coming in the actual daytime temperature was nice but the water was frigid and it was rising in a large lake it was rising multiple feet per day and the fish were up in literally inches of water inches of water pushing as that water rose they were right there prowling the shoreline but we couldn't get them to eat reaction we had to go all the way to a ned rig and finesse it right on the shoreline and then it was just lights out and we were catching big smallmouth doing that so do not be afraid to adapt if you get up there start reaction fishing it's not happening it's not because they're not there they're just not quite ready for it don't be afraid to finesse or throw a big jig and if you do throw a jig in that murky water go with a bigger profile and darker color that will make a big difference it's easier for those fish to find that profile in that murky water if your water is always murky seems like the fish don't care they'll eat green pumpkin and green pumpkin colored water as long as that water has been that color for a little while but if it just turned muddy yesterday or the day before that's when you start getting bold or very dark to stand out in that water for those fish because they're still adapting as well winter time is a great time guys don't be afraid to go out there some of you don't have a choice some of you are stuck with ice go ice fishing I mean make the best of it get out there or jump in the truck or jump on an airplane and go somewhere that's fun to fish during the winter but for those of you that aren't frozen up there's no reason not to get out there this is the time of year that PB's get broken year after year after year you want to catch a monster you go out there when nobody else is here and you fish hard this is your best shot this is when the big ones get caught middle of winter will fall into the middle of winter and then again pre-spawn spawn that's when a lot of the giants happen across the country so don't be afraid to be a part of it so just to recap three places that you're looking for fish on your fishery hard rock I don't care if it's giant boulders or chunk rock as long as it's hard rock number two the hollows middle of the bays guts of the coves you fish the hollows number three that hard cover 
that's sitting in the water and extends above the surface of the water. If that serious rain starts coming in, water starts flooding, move to the shoreline and chase it. If it stabilizes, those fish are gonna go right back to where they were before, and then they're slowly, as the winter progresses, gonna make that transition towards the backs of the coves to begin that pre-spawn and spawn pattern. I hope that helps you guys. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Down below, I'm gonna link you all the gear that we would be using in these conditions. We appreciate you, and we'll talk to you soon.